Hello, welcome back. So in the previous video, we have seen uh, the introductory part of Azure Data Factory, why we are using it, how to use it, what are the benefits of using it, and what are the resources available uh, to learn uh, Azure Data Factory and uh, the basic uh, details of it. So in this uh, video, so let us concentrate on uh, how do you create a data factory in Azure portal and what are the different navigation uh, that you can see, uh, navigation options that you can see within the Azure Data Factory. So before getting started, if you are new to this channel and haven't yet subscribed for this channel, I would recommend you to please subscribe this to the channel and press bell button for instant notification. And also don't forget to share this with your colleagues and friends who are interested to learn data engineering with Azure. Let's get started. As you can see, I am in Azure portal now. Like if you see here, I am into portal.azure.com and whenever I just type portal.azure.com, it will ask me the username credential. So that I'll be logging with my username credential and then this will be a, your home page where landing page where you'll be uh, like landing and then we can be able to see uh, different options here uh, to, uh, in respect to data factory. But uh, before uh, proceeding, like if you want to know about how do you create this Azure portal and how do you get the free subscription uh, uh, from uh, Microsoft to create your practice account. Uh, so there are details uh, regarding this. Uh, I, I, we have created a video for that. Uh, and uh, the, there is a link in the description you can go ahead and check how do you create this azure portal uh, so that you can uh, do your practice uh, 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 like uh, and learn the things uh, more practically right and uh, yeah so getting started with uh, azure data factory itself right uh, so this video is more concentrated towards uh, how do you create azure data factory and what are the different navigation options uh, that you have within azure data factory so yeah let's uh, learn uh, i mean let's uh, learn more specific about that and uh, so once you are into this uh, portal.azure.com which is a landing page of uh, microsoft uh, azure portal so there are different options as you can see just mouse over it you'll be able to uh, get an option here uh, to create it it is the most easy and easiest option that you can see uh, if this option uh, i mean you can choose to click on create resource also when you create resource it will take you to the new page of a create resource uh, where you can uh, indeed uh, go and check here uh, integration because data factory is part of an integration uh, category here or if you don't know if there is a like directly only you can just check uh, you can just type in a uh, data factory here and you will get the option to create the Azure data factory right so yeah i mean you can use uh, any of these options uh, basically and uh, uh, do a navigation and i would be choosing the easiest option here just creating this once you click on create uh, i mean whichever way you are creating it will take you to this, this, this page uh, where it will ask you a couple of details uh, the, the very basic detail is the subscription because uh, all your uh, uh, charges, I mean, you, like Microsoft will charge you based on your subscription only. So any resource that you create, uh, like maybe data factory, SQL database, uh, any uh, any infrastructure, uh, like storages, uh, so everything will be tagged to your subscription. So and this subscription will be used for billing. So and then you create and uh, then you use a uh, uh, resource group. So I'm using uh, any uh, existing resource group for that matter. Uh, for that matter. And uh, next is. Uh, I'll be giving some name here. Okay. So let us see uh, the data channel is the, yeah, and then I'll give ADF, right? So then I'll use the default regions. So when you're selecting a region, so yeah, when you're selecting a region, so you should choose uh, the region where most of your uh, data lies, basically. If you are uh, creating a data for integration of uh, 10 databases if you're 10 out of 10 databases uh, if you're uh, uh, say like seven to eight database lies in uh, east us uh, and it makes sense to uh, choose east us because uh, you will in, in that case you will go near to your data so if you are near to your data so then it's obviously a, a benefit uh, with respect to the speed if, with respect to the, there's a lot, lot of volume also it will be a more quicker uh, like that, that's the that's the most uh, uh, easiest way of choosing uh, uh, the region i would say so otherwise there are different compliance reasons uh, where you want to store your data and that is specific to your organization and enterprise but uh, by the thumb of rule it is always better to choose the region where uh, your data lies right uh, and uh, currently it's a version uh, 2 there is no version 1 so version 1 is deprecated already and it has been removed so current version of data factory is version 2 right and if you click on next uh, you can do a git configuration with respect to data factory so like whatever the code like uh, which you write in data factory it, it will be in, in the form of json file format uh, so you create a pipeline you create a data set link service integration runtime everything will be in a json format and this json format code will be stored in uh, git can be stored in git so it is optional you can choose you can choose to store it in a git or you can uh, maintain it directly in a data factory live mode so if you are not using a git 
or if you're not enabling git that means you are using a data factory in a live mode so by default it will be in live mode that means whatever changes you are doing it will be directly published to your data factory live mode so if not there are two options to uh, enable uh, git basically you can choose azure devops git or you can choose enterprise github so it is a uh, it is a specific to your organization needs or your project needs basically and uh, once you choose uh, among these uh, you can uh, configure your uh, devops account name project name what uh, what repo you want to choose what branch you want to choose so all these details uh, are like obviously you need to uh, kind of populate here so currently uh, i'm choosing uh, configure git later because of the interest of uh, time and uh, uh, like uh, that's not a i mean that's not a scope uh, to uh, scope of this video to show the details of uh, git configuration so basically like uh, definitely in the upcoming videos we can discuss that in detail but uh, yeah so we will move forward and uh, in networking uh, so we see public endpoint and private endpoint so currently i'm uh, i'll not go in detail but you can read about this okay so uh, like i'm just choosing a public endpoint and moving forward and uh, yeah basically the networking is mostly how you want to expose the data factory with respect to security right uh, whether you want to make it a private endpoint or uh, like a public endpoint uh, which can be accessible and going to the advanced so advanced is again a data factory encryption by default it shows uh, like microsoft and uh, managed keys it will use so not to worry so uh, most of the projects will keep this as a default or you can like if you have any organization specific uh, customer managed keys if you want to use right otherwise microsoft will take care uh, by using their keys but if you want to bring your key so then you can uh, basically uh, keep uh, i mean upload your uh, encryption methodology or encryption key based on that uh, data factory will encrypt your uh, code or data so yeah just i'm uh, unchecking this because i want to keep it uh, default to microsoft managed keys and going to the tags so tags uh, basically this is important uh, when you kind of uh, uh, categorize the resources so with respect to the billing or with respect to the monitoring right so in that case uh, like if, if you have a lot of data factories that you are using like uh, hundreds of hundreds of uh, data factories that you have within your organization and you want to tag basically based on the department based on the subscription something like that right so then you can choose uh, this uh, tags basically then it will be helpful when you want to filter uh, with uh, respect to the tags but uh, as a development point of view uh, i mean uh, it is not so much important and finally there is option of review and create once you click on that review and create you can see it has been uh, uh, like validation it, it does a validation and once the validation is created it shows a couple of details you can just validate those details and then hit create so once you hit create it will take uh, like one or two minutes uh, to get uh, data factory up and running so now it is submitted and deployment in progress so you can uh, you can click on here uh, to check the progress and you can keep on refreshing or it will show you in the notification also you can see it will show the deployment uh, status and now you can see it is successful and it will it is saying go to resource so i can al already see here click on go to resource once i click on go to resource uh, you can see all the data factory related details here right in the overview and uh, you see access control access control is basically where uh, whom and all you want to give the access to right so that's come to come into picture here so you can give your access what is your access whether you're a contributor or you are just uh, having a read access and you can click on add, click on add here and you can add a, uh, like a active directory resources uh, you can add a resource group so you can add service principles uh, uh, basically you can add a, a couple of uh, we have different options basically here once you uh, kind of have that i mean you can use it and networking basically as i mentioned it is basically for how do you want to expose your uh, uh, like whether it's a private or public endpoint you want to create right and uh, yeah so these are the basic details and definitely like there are uh, monitoring and alerts mechanism you can create a custom alerts uh, or like and custom matrix so this we can see in a separate video where we will uh, cover this uh, data factory monitoring so once you create a data factory we will come some some stats will start flowing here you can use log analytics also so log analytics is uh, basically collect your data factory logs and it runs some rules on top of it and to produce a custom uh, alerts right so uh, you can see here currently we don't have any data factory i mean we have a data factory but it, it is not been uh, i mean there's nothing running in it so you don't see any matrix everything is blank so once we create data factory and run something then only we will be able to see something here and uh, you can create a rule saying that uh, a custom rule saying that if your data factory is, uh, is failed what to do okay if your data factory pipeline is succeeded then what to do so those kind of custom alerts uh, basically you can go ahead and create here and uh, similar to the logs logs are nothing but uh, it, it talks more about the log analytics as i mentioned so your uh, complete data factory logs uh, will be flowing to uh, once we enable this log analytics on your data factory so your data factory logs will start flowing into log analytics right uh, and uh, once it flows to log analytics you can create a custo uh, queries basically which is provided by uh, azure uh, and then uh, you can create a queries and write a queries to create a custom alerts or custom uh, 
notification kind of thing uh, with with using that yeah so this is a basic uh, navigation that you can see in the left uh, leftmost panel but still the most important thing or the most important navigation that we have to do is uh, the data factory itself that means we have still we are not went inside data factory so if you want to go inside data factory you should be in the overview and then click on open azure data factory studio start authorizing and monitoring this this one is there right you can click on this or uh, so once you click on this you'll be able to like navigate to azure data factory or there is an option like where you can click on data factories and then here it populates you can search here your data factory name right so once you search your data factory name here and you can click on your data factory so here again it will bring you to the same navigation pane where you can click on and uh, your Azure data factory starts loading right awesome now we, we are in our data factory uh, Azure Data Factory inside Azure Data Factory, and here you can see the data factory name, uh, the data channel area, right? So this is a home page of your uh, data factory, and Azure will always recommend you to set up a code repository so that you will not uh, uh, lose your code uh, accidentally uh, if anybody is making any changes, uh, uh, like in your team or any colleagues are making any changes, right? Accidentally want to do not lose your code, so that's where it is always recommended to set up a Git repository so you have version control enabled and your code is safe. So that is the recommendation. Yeah, once you click on this, uh, whether you can choose a uh, enterprise gate or Azure DevOps gate, that is uh, that is a uh, uh, th there is an option to do that. But uh, so as you can see, the other options, right? You can see home, author, monitor, and manage. So let's see one by one uh, what are the different uh, options that you can see in the home. As you can see, you have uh, basic uh, details like you can click on new where it shows the pipeline, power query, data flow, and data sets. Basically, like you can create a you can start a a de a development with these options. Okay, we will see one by one, but uh, so this, uh, the most important is pipeline, data flow, and data set. Power query, I think it is a newly introduced option that we see in the data factory. So, and other option that we see is uh, you can like click on uh, ingest, orchestrate, transform, and config uh, exercise. When you click on ingest, basically it is giving you a template kind of thing where it creates a, a pipeline for you, right? If you click on next, uh, it will ask you the details. Uh, it will create a, uh, I mean, a data set and link service for you. But uh, so we don't want to use this option because uh, it is not recommended to use this option uh, during the beginner stage. So once you become a like a pro in uh, data factory, I would say, so then you can start using this option, right? So this is basically a template. So to create uh, the uh, pipelines with the template, you should have uh, some basic knowledge uh, of uh, data factory. So I would not recommend uh, as a beginner to use this. And similarly, these are all the options that uh, goes with the template. So not to use uh, at the starting itself, right? So yeah, coming back to the other options, as you can see, like uh, there are, there are uh, template pipelines, SAP uh, pipeline template. Basically, they're giving you the templates uh, so that with that template, uh, you can start, uh, uh, I mean, you can start with, start creating your pipelines, right? So that's about home. So the most important option I would say is uh, setting up the Git repository. Apart from that, uh, I won't recommend you to use the home page as a beginner, right? So next is author. So author is a, author is a main, I would say 90% of your job or work will be in the, author itself because author is nothing but you are actually creating your pipelines data set everything here right so once you click on author as you can see you have a data factory resources here and you have a pipelines here right so i will just close this and discard it but in author the main uh, uh, things you see here is pipeline data set data flow and power query so power query as i would mention uh, it is uh, recently released i would uh, say uh, this is out of uh, this video scope so we will discuss uh, more of our pipelines and data set uh, in, in our upcoming videos uh, with respect to data factory and also we can see something about data flow as well but uh, as part of the navigation you can see there is a pipeline data set so here you can create your pipelines clicking on new pipeline so once you click on new pipeline you can give the pipeline name here right so you can give uh, like something pl data factory yeah so and then there are a lot of different options here you can uh, so especially with the data factory uh, as i was mentioning right you can see a lot of uh, uh, the most used, uh, I would say, uh, activity is copy activity to, to bring the data from different sources and put it into different target systems. But else otherwise, you see a lot of uh, like options. You can create custom codes. You can call the data bricks, notebooks, where if you want to perform a complex transformation. And if you have a data lake analytics, you can use U USQL. And in general, you can see uh, like a lot of, uh, these are all called the activities, basically. Whatever you see here, it's append activity. It's a delete activity. It is a fail activity, right? So these are all the activities that you see. Right. So this is a pipeline and inside the pipeline, whatever you drag and drop, these are called the activities. Okay. So in detail, we will discuss about uh, 
each activities in the upcoming videos but we are just seeing uh, that as part of the navigation what are the different uh, things we see here and in HD Insight it is more of the big data analytics uh, on-prem especially on-prem big data analytics when you are using it so you'll use HD Insight and uh, iteration and controls are nothing but uh, you can see here so these are nothing but just a programming typically what we'll be using right so here you can use it as a drag and drop component you do not write any code right and if you have any machine learning use cases uh, if you want to use an ML lab from uh, here if you want to run something so you can use it so these are the basic navigation that you see in the pipeline so pipeline data set uh, is what you see uh, in the author tab here okay you can similarly how you created a, a pipeline you create you can create a data set also so when you create a data set is it asks uh, what kind of data set you want to use if you, if you want to use a blob storage uh, data set that means basically you have a source data set and sync data set so source data set is from where you bring the data sync data set is where you put the data into right so whenever uh, especially whenever you are using a copy activity right so when you click on copy activity so let me kind of uh, show you this so you have a source here and source will ask the data set so what will be your source so as you can see there are a lot of lot of connector amazon s3 you have a blob storage you have cosmos db data lake sql db data bricks sorry not data bricks it is a data lake data lake and uh, synapse cassandra db2 whatnot so all possible data uh, databases uh, uh, big data component storage services http right sap third party applications there are a lot of things you name anything you have a connector for this right so and uh, okay, we can also navigate with respect to this is all and you can uh, navigate with respect to the category category also as you can see here and say for example my source is blob right then it will ask you the file format and then you can click the file format so then you can create a so basically it will create a data set for you so uh, this is how you create a data set with respect to the uh, any connect any connectors so uh, so in detail i'll not explain here in the upcoming videos i'll explain in detail how do you create all these things but uh, so this is how at a high level we'll be creating the i mean you'll, you'll you'll see what you see in the author tab you see a pipeline you see option to create a data set so now data set will be linked to the link service so any data set will be having its own link service so where do i find the link service so that will be find, find found in manage tab so as you can see in the manage tab when i click here you can see a link service so link service is nothing but a, you will establish a connection to either source or sync that you will be using right so as you saw as you as we saw previously right it is the same thing like uh, you will be using a blob storage and here you will give the credential for that so if you are using a, what kind of authentication you want to use to connect to the blob storage if you are giving a database whether you want to authenticate that with a username password or with the windows authentication well, basically it is a connection details it will ask here in the link services so with this connection detail it will create a it will establish the it will store the credentials here of your uh, uh, whatever uh, source or target systems you are having and then establish the connection to that uh, uh, source or target systems and you create a link service so this link service uh, can be referred in data sets so that is how it works but uh, and that data sets will be uh, referred in the pipelines basically understand the hierarchy link service will be there and then that link service will be used in data sets and that data sets will be used in your pipelines okay so that details we will see uh, uh, in the upcoming videos but uh, just keep in mind uh, with respect to the navigation of it and integration runtime uh, so integration runtime is uh, again uh, so uh, like it's one of the option basically like uh, when you are using on-premise, you have to create a new integration runtime uh, that is called a self-hosted integration uh, the integration runtime where you have option for it. So that also we can see in the upcoming videos in detail. But keep in mind, so there is a something called as integration runtime. By default, if you are all this, your resource are in uh, cloud itself, Azure cloud itself, uh, you can use uh, the auto-resolved auto, auto integration runtime. Only in case if you have on-premise, if you want to connect to any on-premise uh, systems, so, so then you have to create your uh, integration runtime, custom integration runtime and uh, then you see a git configuration here so as we mentioned you can uh, like uh, configure git from here also and manage or delete update your git configuration that is already been created and uh, arm template is again used for uh, like a ci cd purpose uh, if you are performing a devops a kind of a, like a, if you want to use if you're using azure devops and if you want to perform a continuous integration and deployment uh, your code will be managed and maintained in the form of arm template so this is arm template is nothing but azure resource manager so you can read about it and you can see here triggers you can create a multiple triggers on your pipelines so triggers are nothing but a schedules basically you create a schedules for your particular pipelines that you create and global parameters are nothing but so basically global parameters are uh, can be used uh, especially in the CICD purpose like when you are per performing the code migration from your development to test environment testing to production so in that cases uh, you want to store uh, some details specific to that environment 
So those global parameters, in that case, you can use global parameters so that it, this global parameters get overwritten, right? When you move to the higher environment, suppose in, in the global parameters in your dev environment can be different and in test prod can be different. So this global parameter, what I mean to say is, is specific to your uh, data factory. Okay, when you can migrate your code, but this global parameters will not get migrated to the higher, higher environment so that you can use this for uh, the CICD purpose, especially for the CICD purpose, right? And uh, yeah, these are the main, I would say, uh, details. Other details are not so important uh, uh, at this level of learning. These are used for advanced uh, learning and uh, usually as a developer, you will not be using this other option like credential and customer managed key. And I would say it is out of scope uh, to learn as a beginner. So, and the finally, what we want to see is a monitor tab. So whenever you're running any pipeline, right? Or uh, you run any triggers, uh, your trigger will, shed, tr uh, you schedule a trigger and your trigger will uh, trigger a pipelines, right? So any anything which is running or which is running, which is failed, which is successful, everything can be seen here and you can uh, filter out by your pipeline name, you can filter by the status, whether I succeed, proceed, whatever the different status of the pipelines that has been running here, okay? And uh, yeah, this, this is basically, a, uh, I would say, a dashboard uh, that will be mostly used to monitor the data factory pipelines. So here, here also there are like, you can create a custom dashboard as, uh, as we are mentioning, right? So this will be showing in terms of charts, uh, the same uh, pipeline status will be showing in terms of uh, like a graph or uh, charts, okay? Which will be easy to visualize what's happening in the, in the uh, behind the scenes. So this is a basic navigation, I would say. Now, as a beginner, you should uh, learn or you should understand how to, I mean, what, what is where basically, but in detail, we will uh, see in uh, upcoming, upcoming videos, okay? So I hope this is uh, clear. Thanks for watching.